Esta noche se presentará trabajos de mujeres locales. El primer segmento es un videotape del Festival de la Mujer celebrando el verano pasado en el barrio de Pilsen. The first work is a videotape from last summer's street festival in the Pilsen neighborhood called okay. Festival de so Mujeres. Make, but make it right corner to corner, okay? And then you cut, you cut one side, flip it over, cut the other side, and then you cut it down. Yeah. Okay? We're both poets from Chicago, and uh, this is a poem for Pilsen. I wrote this when I was living here last year, and it's dedicated to uh, Pilsen and the Plan 21 program. Late night sounds and smells entice, and we prowl like cats through Pilsen sidewalk and alleys. The night wind scatters paper and other debris like malignant leaves through the gutters, and broken glass glitter like old discarded jewels under the harsh street lights, turning vacant lots into family treasure chests. Families all gather on the front stoops, cooling their hot and tired bodies in the night air, watching the wet children run in the spray of the pumps while Santana blasts from the car radios of the dude who's dancing place to the music, embroidering colorful stories, punctuating every other motherfucker with a drag from a cigarette and a gulp of cold beer, coolly eyeing the traffic passing by. A sweet mariachi melody drifts out from a bar on the corner, wrapping eyes in silken strands of harmonies, and a longing beats itself against the ribs, threatening to break out to you. They say you're a slum, Pilsen. Mexican barrio, a halfway house for the upwardly mobile, a dumping ground for the terminal souls that look for hope in a fix or a bottle. You are redlined in the sleep polyestered offices in downtown, talking shit about you being a high risk area, and yet the pimps in Gang 21 are busy making plans to dress you up and sell you to the Johns that are bored of suburban living, wanting excitement without sacrificing convenience. Yeah. Your right. past crumbles in ruins along the tracks that twist through your heart like steel veins and deep rumbles of the elevated trains echo the unrest in the minds of the soon to be displaced their anger and pride splashed in violent colors trying vainly to hide the decaying walls and the long dead painted heroes call silently for revolution Night surrenders to the gold streaks on the horizon, washing the old buildings in its pale light. Blaring car horns splinter the morning stillness, and the pulse of your lifeblood quickens as the men in dark clothes and the patient women huddle like quiet flocks of blackbirds, waiting for the buses to take them to the slaughterhouse of color, blind, greed that will decide your future, Pilsen. We're selling some t-shirts, Mujeres uh, t-shirts that come with the, from the festival. They're done by uh, the same person, people who did the poster. And uh, they're selling very well. They come in medium, large, and uh, we're very proud of the way they came out. How do you feel about the festival? I think it's great. I think it's turning out really nice. Really nice. I think we've got a lot of cooperation by uh, all the community groups and the people are coming out and it's still early. It's still early. Now we, we're selling some t-shirts, uh, Pemex t-shirts, Zapata with a, with a gas pump instead of a gun. And uh, what else? Oh, we're going to have a silk screen demonstration and we're going to have, this is a workshop that we handle between Casa Slan and Mujeres. And we're going to be demonstrating the work that the women did before and we're going to have uh, uh, some clay people doing things on clay and what else oh we have right there, right here 
the mural that we're going to be painting, uh, not the mural, but one of the sketches of the mural that we're going to be painting at Benito Juarez High School. I just graduated from my master's and I've been working in Casa Aztlán and the community for the last three years. I started a ceramics workshop over there and right now I'm trying to uh, build the community center um, in Casa Aztlán as a cultural center. It's very, I'm very unhappy to see that in most of the work I'm doing, there isn't that many women, but uh, we're trying to start changing that and a lot of the women that are, well, a lot of the little girls that are coming to my class are seeing that as a sample and, you know, they see that it can be done. So hopefully in a few years that will be changed. So what do you think about a fair like this for women? Like it. It's pretty good. It's, I didn't think it was going to turn out that good, but now I see it's a lot of people. It's all right. I think we're going to have a lot of fun here. <laughs> and uh, so far people like the booth. What about these posters? Were they done at the... Okay, the, the posters were done by men. Okay, the silk screen were done by both men and women. And the same thing with, with this book here is the, for, the first Latino anthology by Latino artists in Chicago. And it has the work of both Latino men and women in the anthology. Have some of your work in it? Pardon? Does it have some of your work in yeah, it? Yeah, it, it was the first time I got published when, I, when this book came out. <laughs> How did it make you feel when it came out? Oh, it looks, it feels fine. Look at your, you know, your artwork and, and uh, your poetry in print. When I saw it, I said, I got to have some more of this. <laughs> what do you think about this event? It's real nice. It's real nice. It's good. I have a lot of women get to know about their issues and the rights. And, you know, it's, uh, it's very informative. Never seen this in the neighborhood before. It's good. When I think of you, babe, a soft snow falls lightly down my back, turning to steam on my full brown thighs. An ocean appears, threatening to dash me against the hot sand, helplessly spinning me into the mouth of a hungry sky. Cocaine and weed envy the high you give me, unable to recreate the intensity of the world you can conjure up with a snap of a smile. When you're on my mind, I bubble and boil, cooking like thick salsa, spicing up the air around me. I breathe the music Mick Jagger can only cream about. And I dance to an ancient rhythm born in the depths of my womb, yeah. I lay back and close my eyes, dragging in the rich brown smoke of your loving, spinning and whirling, I journey stoned on the thought of you, babe. <laughs> This is the first time I think that anything's been totally run and defined by women. So I think that this is really the first major cultural event that is woman defined. And I'm real excited about it and I hope that it won't be the last and in fact we'll be ready next year. What do you think the other people in the community think about a woman's festival? Well the feedback that we've gotten so far is really good. Um, they seem to think that it's a really good thing. They feel as though Mujeres Latinas in Acción is really doing something now, you know. They say, oh, this is really something, and who's doing it? And they're really excited about it, and I've been hearing that. I've been walking up and down. So I think that uh, the community response has been pretty good. I know when we told just the people on this block, they were pretty excited about it, you know. And I figured, I was a little worried because I figured, gee, people aren't going to want, you know, all this stuff in front of their houses. But they were really pretty excited about it. And this is uh, a water stand. And we have uh, banana water, watermelon water, pineapple, cranberry, and uh, the uh, most popular in the Mexican fried water. Uh, is this, are these recipes from Mexico? Is this what they serve out there? Yeah, this is what they serve in the country, in Mexico, and they serve uh, also uh, uh, tamarindo and all the kinds of waters, but uh, we didn't have enough space, so we brought just what the people buy regular. My name is Jackie Negretti's. That's in Rusty, and uh, I was born here in Pilsen, and I lived here for like, what, 20-something years. And uh, we helped build. I started help uh, working on this building at Mujeres uh, with 18th Street Development Corporation. And let's see, in, um, in June, I started working uh, full-time at a union job doing uh, construction work. And it's been hard, you know, like I, you know, like I started there and they were letting me, you know, slack off a little bit because, you know, 
I just didn't have the strength to do some of this stuff. But uh, now they're expecting me to uh, pull as much weight as, uh, as the guy I'm working with. Sometimes it's a six foot, 200 pounds. Sometimes it's, you know, he's only 5'7 and weighs, you know, about 140. But I have to pull, you know, pull the same kind of weight. But the guys are pretty good because, like, they still, oh, you can't be doing that. You're a woman, you know. They pull it away from me. And I said, well, just stop it, you know. I said, give me a chance. You know, and I, you know, I'll tell you when I can't do it. And, you know, that's what they'll do. You know? When Allende's government was overthrown in Chile by the fascist right wing, um, women in this particular town started going to inquire the government as to the whereabouts of their son, whether they were jailed or whether they were dead, you know, and the government ignored them. And every day they would come to this Plaza de Mayo asking for their sons till people started thinking they were crazy, started calling them crazy, and they became the crazy women from the Plaza de Mayo. And this is written in dedication to them. Me llaman la loca de Plaza de Mayo. Every day I go looking for my son a prisoner of a treacherous tyranny, or maybe he lies rotting in an unknown grave. And I, every day, I go down to the plaza and raise my voice in chorus with the others that come. Maldito asesinos, give us our sons. Tell us what is their crime, what have they done? And they laugh at us, call us crazy for wanting to know. I am crazy because I want to know the faith of my son whose only crime was to say that he was hungry. I am crazy because he raged against the injustice of it, watching us die slowly, having no dreams of our own to nourish us. I am crazy because I love this boy, flesh of my womb, who did the only thing a man with nothing left but his dignity can do. And they laugh at me. Those bloated jackals glutted with the blood of my offspring, dazed with their power, and so blissfully unaware that this crazy woman, whom they ridicule and scorn, carries deep within her womb the beginnings of their execution and the end of their predatory rule. Me llaman la loca. Mujeres como yo, mujeres como yo, con una bandera en el pecho, fuerte como piel de coco, con el diablo por dentro, como bendición pura, sin miedo ser fresca, palabra por palabra, merezco respeto. Mujeres como yo, un ángel fantasma, el ritmo de un condenado palo de palma que baila con el viento, un pétalo, mancha de guineo, mancha de guineo, cuando menos crees el efecto ligero sin sus pechos. Mujeres como yo, machúa y bruta, cruda sin gracia al color rosa, que no se antoja tener un lápiz de labio, al contrario, al contrario, que solo siente los colores bellos de su piel café, el espíritu por dentro se baña con flores blancas. La gracia de una mujer, mujer verdadera, sin seno, sin cintura, pero aquella bandera en su pecho, el diablo por dentro, espíritus en muerte, se baña con flores blancas. Mujeres como yo, la mujer fuerte, dura, como una montaña, la cosita más femenina, la cosita más femenina. Bueno, como un condenado palo de palma, su alma baila el ritmo del viento, la mancha de guineo con ligero efecto. <risa> 